Welcome back. Thanks for joining us again. We're carving with Eric, and we're still working on this little Indian guy, Native American. This is where we went with our last video. We got to this point. Let me move everything out of the way. I'll do my best to stay in the camera and try that. And I've got the computer right in front of me, so I'm videotaping on there, video recording on there, and so I'm hoping I can watch that at the same time. We've outlined the legs, shoes, the blanket, and the hand, and given some shape to a few other places on there, and and indented into the into the head. Next thing we want to do is I want to start shaping the head. I'm not done with anything here. There's not a single thing I'm done with, but I want to stay. I want to start working on the head. And one of the things you've got to remember is that wedge shape of a head. So when you go from the ears to the front, there's a wedge shape. And so if you can see, we don't have that wedge. We, we're pretty square. And so we've got to create that wedge. So I'm just going to grab a big knife. And whatever I do to one side, i got to do to the other. Take a look at it, see if it matches up. Got a little bit off of one side that I didn't get off the other. Okay, and so now I'm just going to continue shaping and narrowing that head. I'll continue doing that for a few minutes because that's where I'm headed. You can see we got a little bit of shape there, but we're really wide on the head. Now, when I go to cut in and shape that head, I got to realize I'm going to leave some things out here. see if I've got one that I've done it to. I don't, I don't have any one that I've really done that much to it. Maybe this one. Where the head comes down with the parts of the headband. So I want to leave, I want to leave that part there. And so when I go to leave, when I go to do this, I want to make sure where everything is going to be. So I want to take, again, I don't like these saw marks. It really drives me nuts. So I'm going to just take a couple of minutes to just really minutely remove enough wood. I'm not going in very deep. I'm just taking off these saw marks that you see all over the wood. It makes it easier for me as a carver to be able to know where I'm going if I take those saw marks off. So I'm just going to go up and then that, see that ridge right there? I want to cut that off as well. So I'm just going to thin that. Understand the grain and knowing where you're going helps. So again, I'm not taking off much. I'm taking off a, well, I bet I'd, I'd be lucky if I took off a sixteenth of an inch. And I'm going to continue that shaping all the way up to the top and get rid of those saw marks across the top. Okay. I want to slim down that face a little bit more. But I'm still going to leave enough chunk there to be able to add the things that I want. So I'm going to draw in what I need from this point. Figure how far back, how far back the headband is going to be. So this looks like it's got feathers from here back and then a headband tucked in there. So figure out how far back that's going to be. Now if you want to, you want to measure that up, that's okay, but it looks like if I were guessing, right here looks to be about where the headband is. Does that look about right to you? Because if it does, then I'm going to drop that down. And I'm going to do the same thing to the, to the other side. I'm coming out to here. So I want to come out to about right there. Didn't hit it, did I? That's eh, close enough. Have a headband. 
And I like putting a rosette here because for me it's a transition area. So between here and here, can't draw on non-flat wood. That's roughly where I want the rosette to be, which means from there down, I've got things hanging down. And then from, from that point backwards, let me trim off right here. Get those harsh edges out of there in the front of that bandsaw mark. Alright, switch to a pin, might be easier to see. But that's where I want to be, so I'm going to draw a round rosette, and I like, I like doing those because those just provide a, a kind of a stop stopping point for everything there and then the headband comes over here and then from there down is my tassels or whatever you want to call them and just because you draw them in there doesn't mean that's where it's got to stop or where it's got to be and so over here I'll have this where the head where the feathers come in and then I like to draw one big one here and then I'm going to draw others just as straight lines okay so I've got one two three four five six seven so I should have seven here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I'm going to go on the back and I want to outline where the feathers are going to be. Now it's up to you whether you decide to carry that and tuck it behind a trail, train, whatever you want to call it, but I'm going to put the skull cap so it takes up quite a bit of that because he's got a big head, so I want to make sure I have that skull cap where it belongs. Okay. And so that's what I want to outline. And what I, what, I, what I can do is when I outline the face, I can move these in a little bit because they're sticking way out here. I can move them in a little bit to make the face a little more narrow. It helps when I have that drawn in so that way I know where I'm going. Wide, big face right now. Now's when you got to make all those, all those decisions because if you, once you cut that headband in, it's really hard to, to, to not leave it there. So I'm going to carve that flat line or that line off and I'm going to carve that line off. And so here is where I go back to a gouge. I have a one of my Drake gouges. I really like Drake. I, I know the manufacturers of the kind and the company. I know the ones that make it so they're very good folks, good to good to the carving community. So I use their tools a lot. I have a lot of them. That's where the headband's going to be. So I'm going to cut up to it. I really like how some of you can really carve using your extra thumb there. Not an extra thumb, but, the, but the, the thumb that you have. You use that thumb to push. I have, due to a table saw accident a number of years ago, I don't have that extra thumb. So it makes it difficult for me to use that thumb when I only have half a thumb. So it doesn't, it doesn't flex like this one does because it's not, it's only that long. So I'm always impressed when you guys do that because I, or you guys and gals, I don't want to be sexist. But when you do that, I'm always impressed with how you do that because I can only do that on a limited amount of 
what I'm doing, but it's always just looks so much easier and so much better on your hands because you're not using just one hand primarily, you're using both of them and it allows you to get into some places. Okay, I'm just, all I'm doing is narrowing that face. I got that headband and you can see that sharp line right there. I'm gonna take that off in a little bit, but I'm just trying to narrow this face down a little bit. I wanna get it where it should go. So I'm staying within the lines that I've drawn, just narrowing the temples. See how I've narrowed that a little bit? I just wanna make sure that I am giving room for the face. You gotta keep constantly moving around, looking at it and making sure you're in the right spot. That allows me to then cut in for the bottom part. And I'm just gonna take off a little bit right now. I don't need to take off a whole lot. But I just wanna take off enough so that I'm outlining the features. And, and if I'm if I'm off as, as far as sideways or whatever, I can always make more adjustments. <clears throat> Draw in whatever else we need. I got eyebrows here. I want the nose, the bottom of the nose to be about right there, and I want the chin to be somewhere right there as well. See those lines, eyebrows, nose, chin, gives me room to flex in here, gives me the room to bring everything down, tighten everything up. Okay, I don't want to draw these in until I'm done, but I want to narrow that face down quite a bit. But first thing I want to do is I'm going to take a gouge. I have one out here. This is a number, this is a file, Swiss made. Number, I want to say it's a number nine. I can't tell because I'm assuming the pointing part right there says it's pointing to the nine, doesn't focus in. Anyway, it's a number six or number nine. I'm going to say number nine. All I'm going to do is set the eye sockets. I'm going to leave enough room that if I want them smiling or scowling, I can still put that in. But I'm just going up to the bridge of the nose and putting in those eye sockets. Okay. I'm going to come down to the bridge of the nose and take a little bit of that out so it separates that eye socket right there. Ooh, I like the way he's turning out. I can go back and move it back a little bit more if I want it. If I want a deeper socket, I can do a lot of things at this point, but I'm going to stick to not a lot of expression on this guy because we're learning how to do that. And so I want you to do a couple of these with no expressions, and then I want you to take the time to add a little bit more. In other words, when you go back to do the next one or the third one or the tenth one or ever how many you decide to do to practice, you are adding what you want to add, not what I've told you to add. So leave this one, well, I mean, do what you want in, in essence, but for me, it's always better when I do two or three of something and then I get better at it as it goes by. So now what I want to do is I want to take a larger, slightly larger gouge and I want to just go all the way out to the edge of the temple. I'm following, I'm taking that eye socket and I'm moving it out to the edge of the temple. I'm just going to go and deepen it out to where the headband comes in. And that's going to allow me to then see how narrow the head is going to be. So all I've done is deepen those eye sockets out here. if a little more light wouldn't help. I'm not sure if that helps much. It makes it brighter, so I'll leave it off. So now what I want to do is, is, is firm up where that nose is going to be. I've got him a short nose. And so if I just triangulate, that's not the right word. If I make it more triangular, triangulate is finding your way on a map using three points. I'm just narrowing that nose down. 
I've gave him a I've given him a pretty good hook to that nose, but I just want to I just want to now narrow things down. So I'm going to start to narrow from the nose down because right here is where the bottom of this nose is going to be, and I have a lot of flexibility. So I'm going to go below that, make an indentation, cut that off. Again, we're, remember we're, we're doing a kind of a flat plane carving, so we don't need a lot of really sharp, intense details. We just want to give the impression. So I'm going to draw on the nose from the center line. I can make it big because I can make it smaller later. Okay, take my gouge and I just go right up side of that nose. I'm going to go right up that line and outline it. I'm outlining the nose up into the eye socket or up into the bridge of the nose. See that? Let me try let me try a little bit lighting problem here. I'm not sure that changed much so I won't bother with it anymore. I was closing the blinds on my window to see if that would make a difference on how it looked. Anyway, I think you get the idea. So all I'm doing is outlining the edge of the nose, shape of the nose, up into the eye socket. That's all I'm doing. Now I want to narrow those temples just a little bit with a short, short knife. I'm going to make a stop cut underneath that edge of that headband. And then I'm just going to come back in and narrow that down. I want it to look like it's going up under that head, under a headband. I'm not going to take a whole lot. A lot of times with carving, it doesn't take a lot of detail to give the impression you want. So I've cut down into here. I actually want to move those back a little bit more. So I'm going to take that harsh edge off because I want to move that head back a little bit more. I want it to be narrower right in here. So on both sides, I'm just going to take off. I'll have to draw it back in, but I'm going to take that off what I, what I don't want. Because now what I want is I want the face to come down more like this. I may have to drop that jaw a little bit long, a little bit further. So I'm going to take out some of this so that I've got a narrower jaw. It looks like I'm, I may have to go all the way down here. So we'll see. V tool, and I'm just going to go straight down that line that I just drew. Don't go up really deep because if it doesn't work, you may have to move it. And if it's really deep, there's no moving. There's not a lot of moving to that. And I'm thinking that's going to be okay. So I'm going to go into that cut. Just make a stop cut in there. And come back and relieve it. See how that face narrowed down right there? Okay, I'm going to do the same thing here. Except I got to turn it over and go upside down. Make that cut. Make that cut. Okay. It gives me a lot of flexibility because I can always trim a little bit here and a little bit there. Just make sure you're keeping it even. So if you take off a hunk over here, take off a hunk over there. If you take off a slice over here, take a slice over there, especially when you're dealing with faces because faces are fairly symmetrical. Now I'm going to narrow down and in terms of triangular aspect of the face. Just trying to get that down there. And now I can start to go backwards. Not backwards, start to go back into that go back into that space between the head and the and the headband embellishments. Just start to remove back in there. So 
of just making it go back. Now I need to give him a chin. Those cheeks stuck out quite a way, so I'm going to trim them off just a little bit. It'll help me add to the face the details that I want a little bit later. Deepen that recess back in there. on the head side, not on the headdress side. So you get an idea of where the head, where the face is, and where the temple, jaw line, and all that is. Take off those harsh lines right there on the, where I cut in for the eyes. I don't like those. I'll add more later, but I don't like those. Okay, make that chin smaller. out more. And I like the way this is turning out because I've got more room here and I got more room here. So let me grab my pen, draw those rosettes in if I cut them off. So this one's going to come down here, this one's going to come down here, and it's okay if you have two of them. And then the rest of the headband comes here, going up here, across the head, and this is going to go here, here and here. Okay. So I'm going to leave those alone for a little bit, but I want to come up to the rosettes and I want to take a that number nine that I was using a while ago and I drew that circle because that fits that rosette. So what I'm going to do, let me get up here in the middle of the camera. I'm going to go right up into here and I'm not going to go straight into the wood because that might undercut it. I'm going to cut back out. So all I'm going to do is outline this with my, with my gouge, do that at the top, make sure those lines match as much as you can. I know sometimes it might be a little bit hard, but I'm just making those two lines that I cut here and here to outline that rosette. Take a sharp pointed knife and just relieve a little bit of that wood right around that rosette. I don't need to take off much, but I'm just taking off enough to make it stand out. I want it to st stick out a little bit. careful not to cut it off. It's easy, really easy to cut that off. Especially if you didn't have the right angle. I've done that a few times. So now it looks like that rosette. If I take off the marks that I put on there. That rosette looks like it's where it needs to be. Can you see that? Okay exact same th thing to the other side. Go in, away from your, away from what you want to preserve. Okay. Just take nip tip of that knife and just relieve the outside edge of it. You don't need much. Trim it up a little bit. We lost a little bit of wood here, but I had some to take off. We'll trim it up and get those those drawing marks off of it. 
and then we'll redraw what we need to redraw on the rest of it. Okay, the next thing I want to do is separate the headband from the feathers. Going back to that V tool, I'll go between the rosettes to start with. All I'm going to do is just follow that line I drew. And when I say remove that line, what I mean is right in the middle of this V, right here, when I draw a line, I want that line to go right in that V. And that line should, should take the, that, that V should take the line off. So I got that, see how the V's lined up right in that line? It should come and just take that line off. Okay. I'll do the same thing about the, on the back of the head, back, back of the headband, right down to there. On the other side as well. Okay. I've drawn my lines in for my feathers. I don't necessarily have to do those right now, but I want to let's tackle these things right here. Let's tackle these rosettes and or what whatever what hangs down from the rosette. So again, we have a lot of freedom to put whatever we want. And those pictures that I showed you at the beginning of the first video, keep those in mind or go look at them when you go to do this. But I'm going to keep this simple. I don't need a lot of detail. I'm going to grab a smaller V tool. I could use the one I have, but I'm just going to leave it there. And those lines that I drew in, I'm just going to outline them or cut them out. Because I'm going to have these a couple of different colors that we've seen in the pictures that we were looking at. Whatever lines you have drawn in there, do your best to remove those. Because some, somewhere between now and when you cart, when you color this thing, paint it, you're going to remove those lines anyway. And they're just danglies. That's what I'm going to call them. I, I'm not sure what they are, and I'm hoping somebody will chime in, email, something. Again, if you want to get a hold of me, I'm easy enough to get a hold of. I, uh, my email is boyzeowens at gmail.com. My web page is ericowensart at blogspot.com. That'll, that'll change here in the next several months. I'm going to form a, I'm going to make a new website. I've had people ask if they could buy stuff from me, and I don't have a website where I can do that yet. And so my son is a computer guy and he just recently graduated from a coding school and so he's gonna he's gonna help me do all that so I'll, I'll have a new one by the summer hopefully by the end of the summer okay now I'm gonna go back to my V tool and I'm gonna outline the lines for the you know what I don't like the way that comes right flat, flat down so I'm gonna back it up a little bit make it go back a little bit more, not just stick right out there flat. Didn't like that look. Looks a little better. This one too. And now I'm just going to outline a little bit way back in there and make it look deep. So separate that head from those. I don't want to use the word tassel because I don't think they're tassels. But they are. I know they have a special word. I've seen it one time before. I just can't remember it. Separate that neck in there a little bit more. Make that go deeper. So I'm just going to lay that knife down. Cut back there fairly deep. Twice. Come back to it and you cut across. There we go. There we go. Now we're cutting. Deepen those eye sockets since I took out of the temples. I took some wood out there and I want to make it sure it sticks out. All right, I'm just going to take my V tool and I'm just going to cut those feathers. So I start at the top, working from front to back. 
and I'm just going to go around and I'm cutting those feathers. Just outlining the feathers with the tool. Again, make sure your tool's sharp. If not, it's going to let you know it won't want to go through there and it won't cut clean and it'll leave marks. Chatter marks, I call them. You don't need to get real deep on these. These are not going to need to be outlined and, and if they do you can come back in here with a with a knife and make some sharper deeper lines that's all we're going to do is just outline that that uh, those feathers one side then the other much got that where I want it to go and so I'm gonna flip over on the back and I want to I want to cut along these lines and so I'm just gonna these are the these are the back side of the feathers I'm cutting up along that and back down along here and this is where you've got to make a decision continue on or no feathers trail train you, you name it you've got to figure out what you're gonna put on the back of that Outline the skull cap. So that's got to be round because it's the skull cap. So what we're going to do is relieve it. We're going to, we're going to relieve, stop cut here stop cut here and then cut down to that skull cap so i'm going to take a short sharp knife right along the back side of those feathers and then i'm cutting into the wood that way and i'm cutting out out to the outside on this skull cap because I'm going to round it, and so I want it to round away from where the center point is, which is right there. And then I'm just going to take, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to take my fishtail gouge. Again, this is a Drake fishtail gouge. I think this is one of the first tools I ever bought from them. Back in the day, as we say. Now again, I think I'm going to leave, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm making a decision here. I don't need to make that decision right now, but I think I'm going to, well, I don't know. I don't know whether I want to train on there or not. Let's, let's just play around with it and see what we come up with. So from there, I want to cut down into the feathers as well. So I'm trying to make it clear that there's a separation between the skull cap and the back of the feathers. And I want to deepen those feathers back here because they got to stand out. Those are what you're seeing if you're looking at it from the back side. So I'm going to go fairly deep in there because I want that skull cap to really stand out. <clears throat> I haven't really made it do that. pause between <coughs> excuse me a pause between this video and, and the first one that has some lunch and uh, it's making me cough a little bit I don't know why I didn't know peanut butter and jelly did that to me but maybe it did on today Now 
again, this is your carving. You have to decide what features you're going to have on it and how prominent or subdued those features are going to be. And so when you go to do this, how many feathers you want and what color they're going to be. They're going to be, you know, bald eagle, golden eagle, uh, young eagle, what, what, or not feathers like that. So you got you got to make that decision. And at some point, you, you have to make that decision before you really start cutting on some places. Because, for instance, if I want the train to come down here, then I've really got to leave room for that. And I've got to outline that and leave some space for it. So let's say we are. Let's say, let's say we're going to have a fur train coming back here at least that far down. Well, then that means I've got to outline here and I've got to outline here. And I've got to leave room for the, them to overlap the feathers, which are only going to go back so far. So again, there and there. So now I can go back in there and cut that leftover wood out of there because I don't need it. That train's going to come down that way. Well, how did I get that far off the camera? Let me do this. Let me move this camera back a little bit more. Because I shoved it way up there. My apologies again. All right. Now, I'm going to clean that up by coming in with a gouge. Just a number nine. Just going to clean that up because I got some marks in there. It's going to be hard to get out unless I just sit here and piddle play and putter at it. So I'm going to come in here with the gouge and just kind of make it smoother. And then get way down in those corners with a small V-tool. Because I can outline those feathers. That way. Don't need much, just separating it. And I got another little tool that I like. This is a number, it says the number seven, but there's a huge difference between that number seven and that number nine. And I think this is more like a three because it isn't, it is a very profile. Helps me get in here sometimes where I just need a not quite so flat, but I need a little bit more profile to the to the tool so I can get in there and clean some places out. It helps. Flipping the carving all around is probably making some of you have vertigo maybe. Alright, the next thing I want to do is round that. And all I gotta do is just lay the knife down and just take off the harsh edges. It makes it look like it's rounded a little bit more. And that's going to be the skull cap. And then I want to go around that with my V-tool. I'm going to use a small one. Because we're, we're going to paint that dark, which is generally what they do, dark brown, dark black. And just outline it around the other way would be the feathers and they're going to be a light color. A little bit of cleanup in there and we've got that. Now I've got the feathers. I'm going to continue on and separate the feathers here because we've got a couple of steps we got to do here and all we're doing is all we're doing is separating the feathers. So where they come to the back, I'm going to make a notch in there so that you can see them. So every one of those feathers comes all the way through and I just want to make a notch down and up. It's a V notch. You see that there? Okay. Don't need to separate them by much. You just want to leave a little bit of indentation that there's a space between each one of those feathers because they are spaced at the end. They aren't, they aren't flat.
The other thing I like to do is embed one underneath the other. And so if I have my one here, I want to overlap them. So I'm, I'm going to make a stop cut on every one of those grooves that I made. on both sides. And then I want to take a sliver off underneath this side so it, the, the, the one below goes under the one above so I don't need to take off much see that you're just relieving a little bit making it stick out a little more it shapes the one you're you're working on and puts it underneath the other one on the top grain, end grain at the top is a little bit difficult, but you can do it. I got faith in you. knife it's going across that grain and it's just really hard to do I'll just do it with that knife underneath there and hopefully you can see a little bit of that I've got some saw marks I need to take off let me separate the one the one feather here from the body because it goes all the way up into there same thing over here separate that feather from the body and bring it all the way around. All right. I like the way you're starting to look. I really do. I may have made that skull cap a little oversized, but I don't think. I don't think it's going to be, I think it'll be okay. Just outlining that train that's going to fall out of there. Okay. I'm going to take a V tool right along that train, separate it from the rest of the body. And you can add all the details you want on that. But if I come down here and make a stop cut in both of those grooves that I just cut, then I can relieve the little bit of that blanket underneath robe whatever you want to call it make it stand out as well all right we'll come back to the face a little bit later when we're done playing around we're at 45 minutes again and we've got the head pretty much where we want it to go 
Now you can argue that the cows come home whether you want to add all the individual quills and all that. I don't usually do it on a carving this small. I'm going to take a minute to clean up a few of these things. I don't usually do it on a carving this small because there's a limit to how many details you can get in there. On a small carving, that's that's one of the, one of the things about small carvings is there's just a limit to how many details you can put in. And the question is, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to do a carving of small details? Well, there's nothing wrong with that. I just watched a quick video yesterday of a guy who carves intricate scenes in the end of a pencil. And so if you can imagine shaving this down and carving a very intricate scene in the end of that pencil, that seems to me the, the definition of futsy for me, because I know I don't have that patience. I applaud those artists who can do that and I really appreciate what they do I just realize I can't do that and so I'm not going to do that on any of my carvings as well one of the things we'll get to before we're done is all these marks underneath here because they're saw marks and we don't want saw marks we want them gone but the thing I want to work on now in the next four or five minutes before we end this video Get a little bit of shaping going on here is to work on this robe here and so I'm going to deepen this cut right here just a little bit more I want to make it look like it's going back a little bit more and that it's thinner so make that cut up cut that stop cut off right there and carve that remove that so all I did was sharpen that shape of that robe right there and I want to take some of it off here. It makes it look thinner. And it helps me remove saw marks. You know me and saw marks. So I'll round that around because you don't have square blankets when they're hanging on a person. And then we'll come up here and more saw marks. I swear. Okay. And then all I'm doing is just a little bit of cleanup. You've seen where I drew the hole for the hand. We're going to put that in there in just a little bit. But I've got to leave room back here for the thumb because the thumb comes, thumb comes out to here. If he's wrapping around something, his hand's going to be like this. There's got to be a thumb around here somewhere. And the rest of the fingers are come out of here like this. Are you with me? Grab my black marker. I got a thumb sticking out here. I got a big hole that we're going to cut out. And then I've got fingers. They may not be out that far, but that's close enough. If you look at the original, they're tiny. And straight cuts. And I've got a few more of my own. When we dial into that hand, that's got a great big thumb. This one, not so much. Tuck back in. This one's a little bit more prominent. And then this one, tuck back in there too. These other two, we'll, we'll, we'll move on. Anyway, I would drill that out with a drill. But be real careful. You, you, you can use another tool. I've used this one right here. This is the number 11, Drake. Um, I use that one, so it's, it's, I think it's the smallest U gouge I've got. And I can go straight in there and just go back and forth and go around in a circle. And it, it does the same thing. They make a tool called a gimlet that has a handle on the big side and you just turn it and it, it, it has a, yeah, I don't know what it's called. It's pointed on one end and you can drill a hole out that way. But you gotta be careful where that hole is because you wanna make sure that that hole for that gun comes right to the end of that shoe. Certainly not stuck way out here and certainly to the point where you can't get it in there. So you gotta be careful where you put that, where you put that shoe and where you put that hole. All right, we're gonna end this video here. We're at 50 minutes. Um, hopefully I can get these uploaded today, but I'll end that video right now and we'll, we'll do the other one. And, and that should be, hopefully we can get it finished by then. I can usually do one of these in about um, a couple hours and so we're, we're getting close to it, but uh, I've taken some time to explain some things. And I hope that's helpful. I, I, I'd love it if you left feedback. I'd love it if you tell me what you think. Um, the good, the bad, and the ugly. If, 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 it's, uh, if it's too ugly, I might only listen to it for a couple of minutes. But um, 
tell me what you think and then and if there's something else that you want me to do a video on again as always get a hold of me somehow some way put it in the comments email me and i will do what i can to accommodate you because like i said i love teaching and teaching is, is the thing that i've loved doing for a long time uh, almost 40 years and well exactly 40 years now and i don't think i'll ever give up teaching one way or the other and i enjoy it so whether i'm making a pile of chips and helping somebody out or showing how to take this and turn it into a fire starter in emergency situations i love teaching and, and i love learning as well so i'll see you on the next video good seeing you this time thanks for joining us i appreciate it very much and we'll talk to you all later